ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் யுவர் ஃபேவரட் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ இன் சம் ஆஃப் அவர் ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோஸ் வி வர் சீங் அபவுட் தி இன்டர்வியூ கொஸ்டின்ஸ் அண்ட் இன்ஃபேக்ட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சீ ஒன் அதர் சிம்பிள் அண்ட் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் கொஸ்டின் தட் வில் பி ஆஸ்ட் இன் த இன்டர்வியூ அண்ட் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த டைம் வி மைட் பி எக்ஸ்பெக்டிங் சம்திங் பிகர் பட் திஸ் இஸ் சம்திங் அ ரியல் டைம் சினாரியோ வேர் த இன்டர்வியூர் மைட் put you in a situation where you are in a real time scenario and he would ask you or he will give you a situation and he will expect a solution from it and this is going to be your first question in it and uh, usually the interviewer will ask you uh, the question from the answer you tell him so in this video we're going to first see the question that's his first he is asking to you and then in the next video i'll show you um, how the interviewer asks a question from the answer you are telling him okay so you have to be prepared for that because whenever you tell uh, any answer to the interviewer you must be ready with the entire the 360 degree of the understanding over any keywords or any facts that you tell the interviewer so this is the way that i'm going to approach so if you're watching this video please don't miss my next video as well because i'm giving you a 360 degree of uh, all the answers which we are discussing in this video so i believe this video would be very useful to you so please watch the video until the end i'm going to bring you a lot of information a lot of insights in this video so don't please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet and prepare well for interview keep practicing keep watching this interview uh, this video and keep practicing keep telling this um, answers again and again so that you get prepare you keep the keywords in your uh, mind any time that it it knocks your mind and you can tell it to the interviewer so the main, main thing is keep practicing the answers keep practicing the um, the day to day the daily uh, activities that you do in your performance testing so there's no further delay let's go to the video so let's go to the first the question part so let me take you to through the question here so the interviewer is asking you the question um that if you find the response time is high for few transactions at the end of the load test so what will be your next step so you are running a um, a load test with n number of scripts and among those scripts you are finding response time is high take for example like he is telling you that response time for few transactions is like more than 10 seconds or it's like more than 15 seconds with the load that you are testing so what will be your next step this is your question so he will just throw you a uh, the ball and he asks you like how are you going to use it or how are you going to handle this situation right so let's now go to the answers part so the first part of how to deal with this like what will you do so before you just roll your sleeves and start jumping into the fixing part you must first do the analysis so for that what you're going to do so the first part of it is the transaction profiling so you have to begin so you must tell the interviewer that you will begin by analyzing the performance test results to identify the specific transactions which are having high response times because you have the results ready in your hand so first you have to begin by analyzing the performance test results because you have all the response times with you and you have to identify which specific transactions has high response times so that's the very first part you have to do and then you have to use the transaction profiling tools something like the visual the vm visual vm or any other performance monitoring software for example you might have be using the dynatrace or apm or any other tools so why are you using this so by using these tools the profiling tools or the apm tools you must so you you should say that you you must gather the detailed information about those transactions which is the transactions which are having high response times and that includes the execution time the resource consumption and the dependencies right so the first step you're going to identify the transactions with high response times the second step 
we are going to filter out those transactions which have high response times and then using the profiling tools and the APM tools you are going to gather detailed information about those transactions which has high response time so that should include their execution time the resource consumption and any dependencies and once you did or both the first two steps you must group the transactions based on common characteristics right such as functionality or user interactions or system components for better understanding the to better understand the underlying patterns which contribute the performance issue so in this case for example you can take it as a when it comes to the functionality so when i say uh, the common characteristics this functionality it can be a database transaction so whenever you are doing some update or whenever you are doing some search or any user transactions or some system components so you must group the transactions because once you group the transactions it's very easy for you to understand the underlying pattern which contribute to the performance issues so this is very important so you must find the common characteristics such as functionality the user interactions or system components right so this is the first part of your analysis right so you must be very careful in telling all these because once you give all these information the interviewer will get the confidence that okay you have a better understanding on the analysis part on fixing the bottleneck okay so now the second part which is the bottleneck identification right so let's move on to the second part which is the bottleneck identification so when it comes to the bottleneck identification so you have identified so the, the first step you have identified the problematic transactions which has high response times so now you have to dive deeper into the system to identify the potential bottlenecks so first part of that is you must start analyzing the server resource utilization so we all know the very common resource utilization techniques which includes cpu its memory the disk input output and the network bandwidth so by analyzing all these resources you can determine if any resource is being exhausted during the transaction execution for example whether the cpu is exhausted or whether the memory is exhausted or whether the disk io is exhausted so you must start analyzing the resource utilization and this is this comes in the bottleneck while bottleneck identification and then you must start investigating the database performance by analyzing the query execution time and this includes the indexing strategies and the data log, database log contentions right so when it comes to the database performance it's quite critical but it's very important so you have to analyze the query execution time so how much time or how much time does each query take takes and then whether the indexing strategies has been properly followed and the last part is whether there are any database log contentions so these three parts are very important when it comes to the database performance and then when it comes to the network latency so you have to examine the network latency and the communication overhead between the system components particularly in distributed or microservices architecture and this is very important because by examining the network latency and the communication you can understand that you can you can very well come bring out the bottlenecks the last point in the bottleneck identification is you have to look for any contention points such as synchronization primitives or for any shared resources or serialization in multi-threaded or concurrent environments this is very important because we are we might have come across this scenario but we do not really explore this point so you should tell him that you that you are looking for any contention points which includes any synchronization primitives in fact i will tell you how to do this in the next video like because if the interviewer is asking you okay so he's quite curious about okay what what is the synchronization primitive and what is this serialization in a multi-threaded or concurrent environment so first you answer this question in this way and then in the next one uh, next video i will show tell you like how to answer this with an example okay and the third part now so the first part we completed which is the transaction profiling so we are uh, grouping the transactions with high response times and then in the second part we were identifying the bottleneck identification which takes you through the cpu the memory the database the network latency whatever it is and then the third part is the performance tuning so now we have 
come up with all the findings so based on your findings from the transaction profiling the step one and then the bottleneck identification that is step two you have to come up with a plan to address the performance issues so now when you answer this way the interviewer will have a complete confidence on you okay so this guy knows something right so this is the way you have to answer you have to like draft all these way and then you must tell them tell him that you will optimize the server configurations how to do that by adjusting the thread pool sizes by optimizing the connection limits by implementing caching mechanisms or any garbage collection settings to better align with the workload demands so that's the performance tuning that's the very first part of the performance tuning so you have to adjust the thread pool sizes the connection limits caching mechanisms or garbage collection settings to better align with workload demands and then the third part is you have to tune the database queries by optimizing the sql statements and this involves creating or modifying indexes and caching query results wherever it is applicable right so since we were dealing with the databases in the previous uh, part which is the bottleneck identification so you have to tune the database queries right and then you have to implement the caching strategies to reduce the frequency of expensive operations right because whenever we start implementing the caching strategies the response times will drastically come down because this will reduce the frequency of expensive operations or data retrieval from external resources so when it, when i say expensive operations which involves a huge response times or a very big latency so these things will come down and then you have to refactor the application code to improve the efficiency and to eliminate unnecessary processing and reduce contention points then finally you have to consider for any architectural changes such as scaling out components which is you have to scale out the component okay you can scale out so there are like two concepts one is scale up and scaling out so when it comes to scaling out you're going to add another infrastructure to it which is scaling out this will definitely bring down the response times and this also includes uh, introducing load balancing or you can redesign any critical pathway to improve the performance and scalability so that's the third part which is the performance tuning and finally the next part so you did all this so how are you going to confirm that everything is fine so after implementing the performance optimizations you have to rerun the load test scenarios to evaluate the impact of the changes right and then you have to monitor the key performance metrics which is the response times we all know the throughput the error rates and the resource utilization to assess the effectiveness of the tuning efforts and finally you have to compare the performance stress results before and after that is the previous result with the current result to quantify the improvements and then finally you have to validate that the performance improvements meet the desired objectives and that the system can handle the expected workload under realistic conditions and finally you have to iterate on the tuning process if necessary to make sure that you have further adjustments based on the retest results until you reach the performance target so this is how the way you have to explain it to the interviewer and if you answer this question in this way i promise that you will definitely get placed because this answer contains the complete keywords any performance test or any performance engineer would need to answer to the interviewer and i wish you all the very best and uh, i would uh, so the next question so as i told you in the beginning so the interviewer might ask you some question from the answer you told so based on that i'll come up with the upcoming videos so please don't forget to subscribe to our channel uh, follow the playlist uh, hit the uh, bell button so that you get any any of our videos immediately whenever it gets triggered uh, whenever i post it and uh, that with that i come to an end and i believe this video would be very useful to you so until i meet you in our next video it's bye bye from us and let us laugh